Chukadev Goswami said, Iti, as expressed in these words, Anus, Anusmritya, remembering, Swajanam, her own relatives, Krishnam, Krishna, Cha, and Jagat, of the universe, Ishwaram, the Supreme Lord, Prarudat, she cried loudly, Dukhita, unhappy, Rajan, O King Parikshit, Bhavatam, of your good self, Prapitamahi, the great grandmother. Translation, Sukadeva Goswami said, Thus meditating on her family members and also on Krishna, the Lord of the universe, your great-grandmother Kunti Devi, began to cry out in grief, O King. Text 15. Translation. Both Akrura, who shared Queen Kunti's distress and happiness, and the illustrious Vidura, consoled the Queen by reminding her of the extraordinary way her sons had taken birth. Purport. Akrura and Vidura reminded Queen Kunti that her sons were born of heavenly gods and thus could not be vanquished like ordinary mortals. In fact, an extraordinary victory awaited this most pious family. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Ebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gauratvishe Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Hari Priye Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. So, in this chapter that we are talking about, after Krishna has sent Akurura to Hastinapur and uh, he is interacting with Queen Kunti, the great grandmother of Maharaj Parikshit. And these are the words spoken by our worshipable Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. Majority of the times Sukadev Goswami is narrating the various pastimes that is, that is going to help Parikshit Maharaj overcome the, the serious catastrophe that is in front of him of dying in seven days but also in between 
Shukdev Goswami is personally speaking to Maharaj Parikshit, giving his own understanding and giving his own uh, realizations. And every word that he speaks is very, very relevant. And, and here it is explained that Prapitamahi, that Queen Kunti is your Prapitamahi, is your great grandmother. He doesn't just mention Queen Kunti. He says, your great grandmother Queen Kunti. So as we, as we say that, you know, we can be, you know, Krishna Das or Gopinath Das or whatever. But we are all, after all, Rupanugas. Why? Because we are connected to that great personality, Rupa Goswami. So that gives additional responsibility. That we are representing, we are the followers of Rupa Goswami. Or yeah, we are representing Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada Nuga. We are followers of Srila Prabhupada. So when we are representing somebody, or rather when we are just on our own, we, we don't really have to be, I mean we could be not so concerned about, because if, if, if at all something is going to go bad, it's going to hurt our own prestige. But when we are representing somebody, when we are representing somebody very great, then it is a greater responsibility to really represent that person by our behavior. Right? That's why we as devotees are supposed to behave properly because we are representing not just Krishna Das or Gopinath Das or whatever, but we are representing Prabhupada, our spiritual master, Lord Chaitanya, Rupa Goswami. So similarly here, Parikshit Maharaj, out of his great concern, and out of his great mercy on his disciple, Parikshit. Sukhita Goswami was his guru. And Parikshit Maharaj was his disciple. He, he had approached him. He said, I surrender unto you. Please instruct me. And Sukhdev Goswami is telling that Queen Kunti, who is crying in grief, when she met Akrura, is your great-grandmother. So it is very instructive. Because he wanted Parikshit Maharaj to learn that he belonged to such an illustrious family. And this family had had some amazing feats of surrender to Krishna. And you are in a similar situation right now. Huh? So, so he is reminding Bharat Parikshit of the great dynasty that he belongs to. What are the troubles that the great Pandavas went through? If you see the troubles. So the moment he says that you are a great grandson or Kunti is a great grandmother, then all the history comes in front of us. And what is the history? The history of Pandu dying at a very young age. The history of the Pandavas being half orphans being raised in a very, very envious environment, Queen Kunti was struggling to protect them. Everyone around was trying to kill them. They were not wanted. Can you imagine? Please uh, let us all understand a situation where for years we were to stay in a place where you are not wanted. <laughs> and I mean, like you, you, you come to a room and, and, and then you are not supposed to be in that room and there is a meeting going on and people look at you and you get the strong vibes. I said, get out. <laughs> right? You, we all have experienced it. That you, and then automatically you feel very uncomfortable and you say, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not supposed to be here and you leave. Is it not? This is what we have experienced in a small room for, for a few seconds. But can you imagine, you know, staying in a place, in your home, you know, where you're staying, where people are not wanting you, first of all, not, not just not wanting you, but wanting to kill you, plotting to kill you. And you don't have a father to really protect you. Your mother is you know, helpless. You have to fight your own battle. And the only thing you have is the mercy of the Lord. The Lord to protect. 
So actually speaking, I mean, you know, if you really analyze the Pandavas and Queen Kunti, if you really bring them to a level that, that we, I mean, you know, they are great devotees, but not seeing them as great devotees, but seeing them, the, what they all went through, it was excruciating troubles day after day. I, I mean, you know, we, we all know, you know, I, I, I know my wife's father, you know, he died when she was very young. You know, very, I mean, you know, she was in the Pune Yatra. She was with all the devotees and here in Bombay, he suffered a massive heart attack and he died. And she was a doctor, she could have helped. But she was in Pune. <laughs> and she was young. She was just waiting for her MBBS results. And, you know, she, her father wanting to be an MBBS. So, I mean, it sounds very mundane. Say, so what? You know, this is material world. It, it happens. But when we actually go through that, it is so much trouble to really lose somebody who protects you at a young age. And Pandavas were tiny children when they lost Pandu in the forest. You know, and, and we were discussing yesterday in a group of devotees that, you know, we talk about you know, insecurity of not having a proper house. It is a, well, you know, I have only, I stay in a rented place or I stay in a very small, typical scenario of Mumbai, a small one bedroom hall kitchen house and, you know, insecurity because of not proper house and everything. Now, now, Pandavas, for years and years, they didn't have a house. They were just loitering in the forest. <laughs> you know, let us analyze the situation of what they all went through. Hmm. We were also analyzing that, you know, even with the Kaliuga progressing to such an extent, we hear all sorts of unfortunate things happening to the ladies in the society, all the sad things that are happening to them. But it may take years from now to really even do something what happened to Draupadi, her whole family members trying to disrobe her in public. It's not happened yet, right? I mean, we don't hear of that thing happening. This happened 5,000 years ago. So the type of suffering that the Pandavas went through is what Sukhdev Goswami is reminding Parishad Maharaj just by this one word. You are the grandson. You are, he sees a great grandmother, Queen Kunti. And you are now, I mean, it, is, it must be 5, 5th or 6th day of the Bhagavad. 10th canto, 49th chapter. Just, just two more cantos remaining and that's the 7th day and then, of course, he's going to depart. So he's preparing his consciousness. I said, please understand the great dynasty that you belong to. Hmm? So I think we must understand that every word spoken in the Bhagavatam has such weightage and such meaning uh, that you know, it, it, it can really, really give us a deep understanding of the depth of Sukhudev Goswami. And how fortunate we are to read a scripture of such profuse depth. And then of course, we, we hear Queen Kunti, what is the words used? Uh, prar, pr prarudad and Dukhitad. Prarudad means she cried loudly and Dukhitad unhappy. Hmm? Then when we use these two words, what comes to our mind? It must be a person with tremendous suffering. And you know, who is just, you know, just Prahuruddha is crying loudly. Now that's not a sign of a Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu or you know, uh, a person who is equipoised, uh, you know, in all situations as Gita spoke. Gita says that you know, one who is, who is, uh, is self-controlled doesn't get too disturbed by pain and doesn't get too ecstatic in, in, in happiness. And here, Queen Kunti, the words used by Sukhdev Goswami, that she's crying loudly. Not just crying, crying loudly. Prarudat and Dukhita, unhappy. Now you can say, well, what's wrong with Queen Kunti? What happened to her? Why is she not controlling herself? You know, she's a great devotee of the Lord. There is a book dedicated to her prayers of Queen Kunti. The first, in the first canto, she offered beautiful prayers with the same Sukhdev Goswami is narrating. And what happened to her in the tenth canto? She is crying loudly out of tremendous unhappiness. Huh? 
so there might be uh, a doubt in our mind that this grief that queen kunti is going through appears to be very mundane and you know as many times as practitioners as 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 uh, strict practitioners of of the bhakti cult sometimes we have a wrong understanding that we should be tough yes we should be tough but our purpose of life is not to be tough like the stone you know stone has no feelings and that is why this great saint uh he says that there is a mistake the creator has done he has put a stone instead of a heart what is that line vasudev ghosh that ha vashu vashur gya pashanadi that you know he has done a mistake you know instead of a heart he has put a stone instead because the stone has no feelings that, that my heart has no feelings but we must understand the amazing nature of of emotions in krishna consciousness hmm? it is said that emotions I, i was hearing the class by one of the leaders in iskon he says emotions directed towards krishna become the source of greatest bliss and increase the ecstatic love of our nature of our love hmm? so emotions by itself that emotions when they mix with false ego they give rise to anarthas like you know basically anything that is there is basically pure because all the emotions they originate from krishna there is pure greed there is pure lust there is pure anger there is pure grief but when that pure thing mixes with something inauspicious or something inauspicious as a false ego then that gives rise to anarthas ambition ambition to serve krishna is perfect we i want to be a wonderful servant of krishna but when an ambition mixes with false ego you become duryodhan hmm? but when ambition is purely oriented you become arjun that is i want to be a unalloyed servant of krishna it is just that the original quality of emotion is pure always because it originates from the supreme pure Om Purna Mada Purna Midam Purna Shpuna Mudha Chite Purna Shpuna Purna Mada Ya Purna Meva Vashishate. That Krishna is perfect and complete, and everything emanating from Krishna is perfect and complete. And because all the emotions are originally there in Krishna, they are perfect and complete and pure. And that's what we inherit. But when their pure emotions are mixed with false ego, when we come to the material world, that gives rise to 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 all the anarthas. But Queen Kunti. what she is exhibiting is pure grief towards krishna not towards krishna when she is in front of krishna about the family situation and when anything is focused towards krishna it becomes pure because krishna is pavitra when he makes everything pure so so she is weeping and she is crying but but it is it is pure form of grief Uh, there is absolutely no adulteration no so so we must understand that when it is explained that do not throw the baby out with the bath water you know there is a saying that when you giving a bath to the baby <laughs> and you know and the after bathing the water is dirty because there is soap and everything we don't just take the baby and throw the water along with the baby right nobody does that it is stupid you throw the water out and you keep the baby intact <laughs> hmm? this was quoted by radhanath maharaj beautiful saying and very deep so what is explained here is that it is not that we have to throw over our emotions we have to purify the emotions and throw with anarthas and let the emotions remain but the, sometimes sadly we become so very hard hearted it is not natural to be hard hearted it is very artificial to be hard hearted but when we keep on becoming hard hearted more and more and more it becomes a habit hmm? and you know i remember because of poor training or rather more than training because of poor understanding of the philosophy of krishna consciousness we were told and that at least i believe not that nobody nobody told us but we believed that if 
your parents are angry disgusted with you you are perfectly situated in your in bhakti huh? as i mean they should you know that is perfect and you know and many times in grihastha ashram if there are fights and and disturbances that is perfect because you will not be attached and you know if the wife is suffering or the husband is suffering be detached and continue your service because service is higher these are all signs of hard heartedness and if that was required then sukhdev goswami would have not mentioned the example of kunti doing prarudhat and dukhita he would not be using these words because it was not this bhagavatam emotions will be there emotions must be there but how you use the emotions let us all understand that the, the perfection of our life is pure bhakti is not to annihilate the natural emotion of the soul but to purify them it is not that we just annihilate and destroy all the you know that's mayavad you know we, we are not but a devotee of the lord is full profusely turgid with emotions you know we know we are not turgid that you know just prick it and it, it just flows out and not just in small quantities but is profusely turgid with emotions and that's why you see prabhupad sometimes crying uh, you know sometimes uh, you know showing all this wonderful emotions a pure devotee of the lord when i i think when he i i think when he met uh, one of his disciple who went to pakistan and he came back propad was touching every part of his body and crying right say so, oh, are you are you safe i think garg muni prabhu or somebody isn't it say so, propad got up and like a father he came you are touching i said i thought you are dead and the propad touching every part of his body and he said are you safe and he was crying now what will you call that what is this propad you know touching in his disciples body to see everything is okay what is this but he already said that this body is material he already taught to his disciples and what is this emotion but these are pure emotions huh? so please let us all understand the 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 fineness the subtlety of spiritual practice that the purpose of spiritual practice is that we we make our emotions more and more and more refined more and more pure and not in the bargain of purifying if you are doing a chemical experiment and you just throw the main product out what's the use in the pro, in the guise of making the experiment work doesn't make sense you just throw the product out but the whole experiment that we are trying to do the whole process that we are trying to do is purify the emotions that means there is in in the flask there is emotions and there's some chemical we are trying to add and purify purify and then throw the throw the anarthas out and keep the emotions pure so that is what we we need to you know learn you know from this beautiful uh, uh discussion between queen kunti and akrur ji we we also we were discussing uh, you know that many times you know queen kunti is in a situation of great suffering you know she is talking about her suffering and many times when devotees go through uh suffering situations difficulties challenging testing situations then they it it gives rise it tends to give rise through to doubt right when this extreme suffering it results in some sort of a doubt and that's what she said is krishna going to is krishna really remembering us is he going to come here and take care of my sons now queen kunti is a is absolutely a high level devotee of the lord you can question that why is she having doubts what is this doubt you know why does it come we have we are reminded of a situation uh, when arjun was in the battlefield and abhimanyu was killed arjun out of his great uh, you know anger he took a vow that i will kill jaydrat tomorrow or i'll enter into fire and kill myself he took this vow and of course there was a there was a strategy meeting on how it was going to happen and krishna was there and you know they did decide a strategy krishna told it is an experiment of mahabharat it's not going to be easy to kill jaydra because they are going to do everything to protect him you are taking this vow 
you know all these great souls they take vows and then it <laughs> especially typically arjun and who is in anxiety krishna that's why we did this drama when god becomes anxious huh? so krishna after the whole meeting is over and everything he goes to his room and arjun was you know first krishna made arjun sleep they were discussing arjun's tent after the meeting krishna and arjun went to to arjun's tent and, and krishna said don't worry tomorrow it will be difficult but but you know you will be able to do it don't worry and they were talking as friends they baba the explained they both lied on the same can you imagine the friendship of arjun that krishna and arjun were lying on the same bed talking together and then 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 you know then uh, arjun sleeps krishna just goes from his room and then goes to his room and krishna went to his room alone is in his room and krishna is not able to sleep he's tossing and turning and he's having this doubt now please understand krishna is having this doubt the what if arjuna does not kill jayadrath and just the thought of arjuna not being dying and entering fire krishna could not even he said this whole world will be a jury void without without arjun how will i survive in this world arjun krishna is thinking krishna is having that doubt because there was a challenging situation in front of us of krishna so we must understand i mean even lord chaitanya actually lord chaitanya who is the lord himself supreme personality of godhead in a sat aishwarya purna bhagwan he, he goes and meets haridas thakur and seeing the tra- traumatic situation of kaliyuga he said haridas how how will this people ever be delivered <laughs> no no that means this question is asked out of doubt ki kaisa hoga iske log ka kya hoga and the haridas gives solace to the lord he said don't worry lord your holy name is so powerful and there's a whole discussion now you might wonder ki what is this chaitanya mahaprabhu is the same person who says nam nam akari bahudani the sarva shakti tatra pita niyamit smarana ena kala ha uh, that he is this is is a person who wrote this verses that there is so much potency in the holy name and and we, it can be chanted with any rules without any rules and regulations and he goes on with the progression how this holy name can reveal the pure love of god to the heart and he is asking this question to haridas that these people are suffering how will they ever be delivered and haridas thakur is giving him the the consolation you know the the in one sense counseling <laughs> the lord don't worry you know your holy name is very very powerful so so we must understand that devotees should have no doubts in their lives but at the same time from the reality perspective the practical perspective is that devotees when they go through extreme situations of difficulties they may be in a situation of doubt and at that time to call them or isko doubt hai yaar ye bloop ho raha hai problem ha huh? it will be very very insensitive on our part sometimes a devotee might talk saying that does krishna really exist is it not seeing how i am suffering and you say well what are you talking you attend the jhd course you have you have attend the bhagavatam classes and everything how can you say krishna doesn't exist so we must understand one is knowledge and other is there's gyan and vigyan and other is practice of the vigyan which can be externally looking very very confusing many times but our devotee has to be sensitive to the situation the other devotees are passing by akrur if 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 you akrur and vidura who said kunti maharani you are saying this that would not be preaching that would not be counseling right they have they are understanding what she is going through as a mother so so when we are in a process of helping some devotee when in a process of counseling or whatever you know whatever help you are doing it is very imperative and very very important to for us to understand <coughs> what is the situation that this person is into and what is making him speak why is he speaking what he is speaking because you know temporarily you could be in in, in that situation not that you want to be in the situation but you could be in the situation 
So many times we have seen really senior, you know, there was one other devotee, very senior devotee of the many years back, 1990-1991. Uh, she was having some serious uh, disease and I was just two, three years old devotee. And uh, I, I went to meet her and she was alone in the room. And, uh, and she, she said, thank you for coming. And she told, don't chant Hare Krishna. I said, this Krishna is not a God to surrender. I said, my God. I was getting more and more uh, surprised. What is she talking? I said that, you know, the whole process is, uh, she was a devotee for many years. And she got this traumatic cancer. I said, I have given my life to Krishna. But see the state that I am in now. So I was really confused. I said, "By God, I should leave from here." Uh, then one senior devotee came there, and he, he, he was there, and he was. I, I was just talking to him. I said, "What is this?" And then, right in front of my eyes, as Krishna was just seeing my extreme confused situation, uh, and then she she started crying. This this lady started crying, and she started saying this verse: "Ashlishyeva padratam pinastumam adarshana mam hartar tuva yata yata avavidada tu lampato mat prana nathas tu evana para." And I didn't know Sikshastakam that time. I said, what is she walking now? And then the person explained. And she started crying, crying and crying. I said, what to do? Krishna is our Lord unconditionally. I will never give up Krishna. I said, this is amazing. This is a devotee, isn't it? So, so then this, I understood that you know, a devotee goes through a temporary phase and even that apparent Cursing, or not even cursing, this apparent anger towards Krishna is nothing but a sign of love because a devotee does not have anything else but Krishna. Hmm? So, of course, this is one example, but in general, when we have devotees going to difficulties, there could be a phase where they may have some, some negative feelings in their heart because of the situation that they are going through, and it is our duty to help them to remove those negative feelings. And not just tag them as somebody who is, you know, offensive, somebody who is X, Y, Z. That tagging that we do many times. And the, and the last thing that we, we learn is uh, many times in devotees' lives also. Just recently we had a discussion and, uh, a group, with a group of devotees with Braj uh, Bihari Prabhu. We were discussing about Bhakti. And he, he, he gave a nice example. And he was talking about the train which goes through underground, what is it called? The tunnel. Hmm? So when the train goes through the tunnel, and if the tunnel is really long, you don't know anything. You just see darkness in the front, darkness in the back. Huh? And when the train is right in the middle of the tunnel, you see back complete darkness, you see in the front complete darkness. And you wonder what you are, you know, what's happening. You can't even see your own hands. So sometimes in Krishna consciousness, when we join, we are in bright daylight. We are blissful. But as we are going in our process of Krishna consciousness, the train of our devotional service enters through the tunnel of darkness. And we don't see what is back, we don't see what is front. In front, we don't see anything. What is there? Darkness is dikra hai, sir. You don't see anything. And while in that darkness, in that train, if you hear somebody speaking, this Krishna consciousness is all useless. Chhodo isko. You have missed so much thing in so many things in life. You, 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 know, you could have done so much, but you missed it in your youth. You have given your youth to Krishna and what have you really gained? You don't know who is speaking this. Who is speaking? So while in the tunnel, you can start having these doubts in the middle of your life. And this is what typically is called the mid-life crisis. And the mid-life crisis gives rise to this very, very unfortunate situation of doubts in our life. Kunti Marani is having some doubt. Well, this is pure. But devotees... In the beginning, they don't tend to have much doubt because they have a lot of faith. 
Faith is the antidote to doubt. Right? Once you have faith, you no doubt can really stand because you have faith. Even if if even if you don't experience what you are supposed to experience, you have faith that I will experience it. And that that doubt which is caused because not experiencing is gone because of the faith that we have. But as we as we go in a progressive part to furthering in our Krishna consciousness, yeah, it's, it's a powerful syndrome, a powerful effect that happens of midlife crisis. That as we say in the in tunnel in the middle, it's all dark. Don't see light in the front, don't see light at the back, it's all dark. And we all tend to have this feeling that I really have missed things in life. What is this midlife crisis? It typically happens as, as I was studying some books at the age of 40, 35, 40, 45. Uh, when people in general, not, I mean, of course, devotees also, where they feel that, well, you know, they start having extramarital affairs in the offices and all these strange things start happening. You know, they, they, they start, you know, suddenly wearing uh, trendy clothes which they never wore in their life. <laughs> at the age of 45 the women start making their hair much much more different than what they ever had in their life much much more I mean you know trendy there is a whole different bodily symptoms of a midlife crisis explained and of course it is all born out of internal emotion of doubt that I have missed out things in life you know, I was in, I studied my whole life, then I took a job, I was taking care of my family. Because now I have got money. I didn't enjoy. This is a karmi. But devotee can think and does think sometimes like that. You know, every Sunday I've gone to the temple for the last 18 years. Huh? Hurry bowl, hurry bowl, hurry bowl and dancing. But now, you know, I want to take a break. You know, I need break in my life. I, I need to explore, you know, what is there in Lonawala. You know, I, I need to explore, you know, what is, you know, what is what's happening in the world outside. You know, or, or I need to really meet my old friends, which, which I have got connected through the Facebook. You know, I got my old friends of my batch, 1986, you know, BE batch. And the friends are coming together and... You know, we need to just get along. How are they doing and what's happening in their life? Because these are all emotions that crop up. And if they are not checked, this crisis can be, it is called midlife, not danger, crisis. It can create crisis in our life because it's all born out of doubt that can Krishna consciousness give me everything and the, and the answer we get in our heart say no not everything you must you have missed out many things in life try it out and continue your Krishna consciousness but try out those things don't give whole self surrender to Krishna don't do that you need to enjoy individually so many devotees they have been very strict with my with, with my principles now. You know, enough of this strictness. You know, now I want to let loose and, and otherwise, you know, I have to come back to the material world. So this crisis, these thoughts are very dangerous. These doubts. So if we do not have complete conviction that Akale Ishwara Krishna Ara Shakala Bhritya Beautiful statement, right? In one statement, it just smashes all the desires you want to have separate from Krishna. That only Krishna is the truth, our shakala bhritti, everything else is bhritti, is false. So we must have that, we must have complete faith that when we have Krishna, we have everything. We don't need to enjoy anything else separate from Krishna. I was just in the, in the terrace and I was hearing the Guru Puja today. Just the, just the sound of Guru Puja. I, don't, I didn't even know who was singing because I think many people were singing. <laughs> different, different sounds coming. I was trying to trace who is singing. Once it was Radesh Lal, then Jai Sachinandan sounding. I don't know, different, different. Uh, but, but I was just saying that the bliss of, not, not even seeing, but there's a bliss of hearing. 
now why we why we want to give up this bliss why is the thought should come that will i'm missing out something in life you know this darshan of the lord what more can we get better than this darshan of the lord why we want to see anything which is simply as as, as bhaktisan said exercise to the eyes of course he mentioned seeing the darshan as exercise to the eyes in that context right i said just having darshan and not and missing bhagavatam class is simply exercise to the eyes but we are trying to enjoy the external phantasmagoria outside in the world we don't need hmm? so of course there is a whole big lot subject matter of of crisis that comes in the middle part of our life and then we say well in i have my desires and the many people have their own their, their, the hidden desires which are curbed because of the path of bhakti and you could really doubt all those desires in krishna which is perfect but there are many serious desires which are there which cannot be doubted you know you know, I, you know i want to you know explore bollywood and of course it with proper guidance hopefully that can also be doubted i only hope that <laughs> but it is serious crisis if this desire is crop i mean if you don't you cannot give yes to all your desires you have to say no to the desires and you have to krishnaize those desires hmm? otherwise slowly but surely we will lose the conviction the faith in krishna hmm? yeah that's why you know it is not that it is well begun is half done is they say so we all have well begun but it is really half done but at the half period of our life what we do is fully done you you are getting the point is the mid point of our life that many of us are most of us are at the mid point 30 35 40 age and where the body becomes a little slow huh? and people uh, you know we may not be as dynamic as we grow there are many things that we can't do uh, honestly now i used to be <laughs> i can always i once met you said mayapur kirtan one of those mad kirtans in a kartik we were in mayapur and devotees were madly dancing and it was the first kirtan i got knocked out of the kirtan out i mean i used to be part of the kirtan most of the times and i and then we were i was walking with radhanath maharaj i said maharaj amazing kirtan but you know devotees are really really very aggressive maharaj we should do something master you were like that 5 years ago <laughs> and uh, devotees came complaining about you to me also 5 years ago <laughs> and now you know i used to be in the middle and now i should be, and now i'm not in the temple hall at all i can't dance and many of us will have that experience we just and we, when kirtan starts we go out because it's too much right so i mean i'm sure all of you experience that right in the youth we can be part of those gymnastic dancing but then when the body goes old we realize that you know and slowly but if the heart is in the kirtan that is fine of course we should try and be in the kirtan we should try and dance gentlemanly as much as possible <laughs> but of course ecstasy is ecstasy you can't control ecstasies gorang priya's ecstasy how can you ever control <laughs> and that is a fish to the eye to see his ecstasies hmm? sudama prabhu's ecstasy is going down and going how can you control such ecstasies you know but we will realize that there are many things that we we can't do anymore and as we grow more and more older you will see that there are many people doing many things much better than us and we are not able to do that many things that we used to do and then the thought comes that bina abhi mereko kuch i should do something because you know i'm losing out the grip you know of my control is losing out so i must hang on to something and if you hang on to something which is not krishna that is very dangerous like that that uh, bilamagal thakur he, he couldn't hang on to anything he hang on to a snake to go up desperation so, so you hang on to something it might be dangerous like a snake it might take up god knows where hmm? so i think but this is just the few things that uh, we wanted to share first of all you know the 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 complete uh, confirmation of what queen kunti is doing is 100% krishna conscious because she is just much beyond you know grief 
she is on a very advanced level of love for Krishna. So it is not just mundane grief, but the purest form of grief focused towards Krishna and any emotion that is focused towards Krishna is, is a pure emotion. Uh, and, and then we also wanted to say that that you know devotees do go through challenging situations and you have to be very sensitive to their situations because in their situation they may have uh, some doubts and they might they may have some concerns. We have to address those concerns rather than tagging them. And the most important thing is the doubts that arise in our Krishna consciousness. That whether Krishna will give me everything which usually arises after some few years of practice of Krishna consciousness when those uh, innate desires they again rise because they are not out when they rise we have to just take complete shelter of Krishna knowing very well that Ekala Ishwara Krishna Ara Shokala Bhritya hmm? so if, if we are really attached to the process because we have to end the process we have to end till the end, end of our life it's, it's, it's a long journey that we still need to go so let, let not the demon of doubt attack us and let not the midlife crisis destroy our Krishna consciousness and let us all take shelter of Krishna I thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Is there any corrections? Radha Gopinath Prabhu. Gaur Gopal Prabhu. All the, any devotees. Any, any questions? Granth Raj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki. Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki.